Epilogue Heinz's luxurious private chamber was ornately furnished and had a crimson rug. Normally it was covered with a veil of silence, but on this particular day it was so quiet the silence could be heard as its own sound. The maid who normally stood by was gone, leaving only Eines, Albedo, and a death knight standing at attention in the corner holding a sword. Albedo's voice sounded sweet like honey, so it didn't spoil the atmosphere. Allow me to report. The commander of the slain theocracy's sunlit scripture that we captured near that village has been sent to the ice prison. The plan is to have an officer of intelligence gather and get information out of him. If you're getting Neuronist to do it, that's no problem. But you know I want to experiment on the corpse, right? Yes, my lord. Then we are currently appraising the gear we stripped off the night-looking things, but I have heard none of the items are very enchanted. I imagine we'll put everything in the treasury when we're done. Sure, that seems appropriate. Lastly, as a precaution, we've sent two shadow demons to that village. How should we handle Gazef Stronoff? Leave the captain alone for now. More importantly, Carne is our only outside foothold, and the only place we've managed to build friendly relations. We may rely on them for cooperation in the future. Do your utmost to avoid ruining that connection. Understood. I'll make sure we do. Well then, it was brief, but that was my report. Eines thanked her and took a closer look. She always wore a gentle smile, but today's was different. She seemed to be in a nearly uncontainable good mood. The reason was on her left ring finger being stroked by her right hand, a ring of Einzul Gone. Where she wore it was up to her, but it wasn't hard to guess why she put it on that finger. If those were her genuine feelings, as a man, Eines might have been glad. But her feelings were the result of his fiddling. Guilt smoldered in his heart. Albedo, the love you have for me is something I warped. It's not how you really feel. So... What else should I say? Would manipulating her memories with magic be the right way to handle this? Eines faltered and couldn't say anything more. Albedo, still smiling, asked... How was I before you changed me? A bitch. Not that he could say that, though, so he wasn't sure how to explain things. He looked calm on the outside, but inside he was frantically searching for a solution. Albedo, watching him, was again the first to speak. In that case, I prefer my current self, so you don't have to fret about it. But... But? Eins was silent. He was getting some kind of unfathomable sign from her, as she continued to smile. Since he wasn't speaking, she continued. There's only one thing that's important. Eins was waiting for her to continue, and she spoke in a sad voice. I'm not a bother to you, am I? He opened his mouth and gazed at her face. Her words gradually sank into his brain, not that he thought he had one, and finally understood what she was trying to say. He hurried to her defense. N no, not at all. He wasn't upset about being loved by such a beauty. For now. So then, it's fine, isn't it? Um. It didn't seem to be, but he couldn't come up with a way to convince her. It's fine, isn't it? She repeated. Eins definitely sensed something strange, but asked as his last resort, I distorted the backstory that Tabula gave you. Don't you want to get the real you back? I'm sure Tabula Smaragdina would forgive you as a father forgives his daughter for becoming someone's pride. You, you think so? Is that really what he was like? As Eines was pondering that, there came a clatter of metal. When he looked in the direction it came from, there was a longsword on the ground. The Death Knight, who was supposed to have been holding it, was nowhere to be found. It had just been summoned a little while ago. Monster summoned in the usual way return after the time limit is up. From the way the sword from this world fell to the floor, their gear was not a bond that would allow them to remain in this world. In that case, when using a corpse as a base for the summons, it doesn't return because the tie to this world is stronger? 
If we had a pile of corpses, then we could use them to fortify Nazarick. Then shall I gather a pile of corpses? Let's not go digging up Carney's graveyard or anything. Understood. But we should come up with an idea how to gather a large amount of corpses. Now then, if the Death Knight has vanished, it must be almost time for the meeting. Please come with Sebus. I'll go on ahead. Oh? All right, Albedo. See you later. Having left Ainz's chamber, Albedo saw Sebas walking her way. Sebas! Perfect timing. Oh, Albedo. Is Lord Mamunga in his chamber? Yes, he is. She felt slightly superior because Sebas was still calling him Lord Mamunga. Sebas raised an eyebrow. You seem to be in a good mood. Did something nice happen? Kind of. Knowing about the name wasn't the only reason she was happy. She was remembering her previous conversation with Eines. She'd said bride, and he hadn't refused her or evaded. In other words... Her gentle expression twisted to become impure, even for how evil she was. She would never wear that sort of smile in front of Eines. <laughs> I can get him. I'll show her. I will be the one seated at his side. Shaltir can have a place to stand. She whispered her aims not as captain of the floor guardians, but as a woman, and clenched her fists. My succubus blood is boiling. Sebus looked on, a bit disgusted. Ainz arrived in the throne room, accompanied by Albedo. A great many beings were there, down on one knee to express their loyalty. No one moved. It was so still, not even the sound of breathing could be heard. The noises were Ainz's and Sebus's footsteps and the clacking of the staff of Einzul Gon on the floor. Eins climbed the stairs and sat on the throne. Sebas, of course, stopped at the foot of the stairs and kneeled behind Albedo. Having seated himself, Eins silently surveyed the scene stretching out before the stairs. Almost all of the NPCs had gathered. The best part of this was seeing everyone all together. There were so many different beings it was like a parade of demons. He wanted to applaud once more the imaginative power of his guildmates, who had brought all this forth. Looking over everyone, he noticed a few people missing, but that was unavoidable. The ultra-giant golem Gargantua and guardian of the eighth-level victim couldn't get away. Not that it was... Not that it was to make up for their absence, but there were more than just NPCs gathered. There were many high-level minions, no doubt painstakingly selected by the floor guardians. Even so, the throne room was so spacious it felt a little empty. The throne room was the heart of the great tomb of Nazarick and its most important area, so he understood why people would hesitate to admit minions. But he thought the rule could be relaxed a bit more. But that's a matter for another time. Eins decided to address it at a later date and opened his mouth to speak. First, I'm sorry I acted on my own. He apologized in a voice that didn't sound like he felt sorry at all. This was just for appearances. What was important was that he apologized. He'd acted at his own discretion, but he didn't want those beneath him to think he didn't trust them. Ask Albedo what happened while we were gone. But there is one thing I want to tell all of you here right away. Greater break item. Eins cast a spell that could destroy magic items of up to a certain level. One of the big flags hanging down from the ceiling fell to the floor. The crest on it was Mamunga's. I changed my name. From now on, call me... Eins pointed his finger and gathered everyone's eyes. Call me Einzul Gon. Eins for short. His finger was pointing to the tapestry behind the throne with the guild's crest. He struck the floor hard with his staff to get everyone's attention. Anyone with objections, stand and say so. No one had anything to say in response. Albedo spoke, beaming. We have heard your honorable name. Hail, Lord Einzul Gon. To you, most noble one, Einzul Gon, we of the great tomb of Nazarick pledge our absolute loyalty. Then the guardians joined in. Hail, Lord Einzul Gon! The one who brought the supreme beings together was you. To you we devote everything. 
Hail, Lord Einzul Gon! You are a king who wields horrific power. All beings must know your greatness. The NPCs and minions' cheers echoed across the throne room. Bathing in the praise, Einz thought, Mates, what would you think of me monopolizing our proud name for myself? Would you be happy? Or would you furrow your brows? If you have an opinion, come and tell me. Tell me it's not my name alone. When that time comes, I'll gladly return to being Mamunga. He looked out at everyone below him. I'm going to give a strict order now, a guideline for our policy going forward. Eins paused for a few moments. Everyone's expressions had tensed. Make Einzul Gon an enduring legend. He thrust the staff of Einzul Gon into the floor with his right hand. The second he did, the colors from each of the jewels began to come out and shimmer in the air. Where there are many heroes, crush them, because Einzul Gon is the greatest hero. Make it known to all living creatures. If we come up against someone stronger than us, then make it known by something besides strength. If we come up against a mage who has a large number of men with him, then choose some other method. We're still in the preparatory stages, but we must work toward the great day that will surely come. We must make it known that Einzul Gon is the greatest. He wanted to spread his name and get into every ear in this world. His old friends, the guild members of Einzul Gon, were supposed to have quit, but there was still a possibility they might be here. That's why he wanted to get to the legendary point where everyone knew his name. On the earth, in the sky, and over the sea, all sentient beings must know. Then it just might reach a former guild member. Einz's voice, brimming with ambition, was powerful enough so that everyone in the room could hear. Everyone bowed their heads, so in sync that the motion was audible. Their attitude could be called prayer or worship. The throne looked a little lonely once Einz had left, but excitement was still high in the throne room. Receiving orders from their absolute ruler and getting started on their tasks altogether lit a flame of passion in each of their hearts. Especially zealous were the ones who had received a direct order. Everyone, raise your heads. As if tugged by Albedo's soft voice, everyone whose head had stayed bowed looked up. Each one of you has received a direct order. Follow it humbly. Now we have something important to discuss. Her eyes never left the Einzul Gon tapestry behind the throne. The NPCs and minions behind her looked at it too. Demiurge, please tell everyone what Lord Einz told you. Understood. He was still kneeling like everyone else, but his voice carried so all present could hear. This is what Lord Einz said to me while gazing at the night sky. Perhaps the reason I came to this land was to acquire this untouched box of jewels. And then he continued, No, I shouldn't monopolize it. The great tomb of Nazarick, my friends in Einzul Gon, should be adorned as well. The box of jewels here is this world. So here we see his true intention. Demiurge smiled, but not warmly. The last thing he said was, Taking over the world does sound kind of fun. Which means... Something glinted in all of their eyes, the color of their determination. Albedo slowly got to her feet and surveyed everyone's faces, and they all gazed back at her, keeping an eye on the Einzul Gon tapestry behind her as well. Comprehending Lord Einz's true intention and preparing to fill it is proof of our loyalty and the mark of able subjects. Know that our ultimate goal is to give this world, this box of jewels, to Lord Einz. Albedo grinned ear to ear, turned around, and smiled at the tapestry. Lord Einz, we will make this world yours without fail. Her voice echoed as she continued. We will give all this world has to offer to its true ruler, Lord Eins.